I was born ready. <laughs> Let me do this. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast. Once again, I'm here with my fiance, Mimi Duggar. Are you guys sick of me yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the idea for this podcast, again, is I am going to run it. Mimi ran the last one or the last episode whatever okay first of all (laughs) we're starting this new thing where we're gonna do one chatty like fun podcast and then one like serious focused one Mm -hmm. so this is gonna be the chatty one chatty one wednesday will be the focused yes and so for this one i'm gonna run it i have some topics i want to talk about i have some questions i want to ask mimi um but yeah very just whatever and then the next one is gonna be pretty good i'm really excited about that it's going to go over my time in germany uh so anyway let's roll the intro and let's get started So before we start this podcast, I want to thank the sponsor of this episode. This is sponsored by chaossoccergear.com. They have been sponsoring a lot of the episodes of the podcast. I'm sure you guys have heard of them, um, and I hope you guys have checked them out. You can check them out at chaossoccergear.com. They have a very cool Aztec Mayan. I always forget which one I say, but it's one of them. It's very cool design, and it's actually a very high quality ball for the price, which is like $80 or 80 euros or so. Um, They send it out to me. It's actually my home in Portland, and I still use it when I go back there. Uh, They also have like ball pump, t-shirts, sweatshirts, some cool things. So it's a young brand that's really developing, growing, Growing, and uh, I think you guys should really just at least check them out and see what they're about. So thank you to Chaos for sponsoring this episode, and let's get into the Against All Odds podcast. Mimi, how are you feeling today? Pretty good. We kind of put this off to the last minute, but I'm <laughs> yeah, good. Because this literally has to go out tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. I can do it. It's okay. <laughs> well, pro editor. Yeah, pro editor. Yeah, but and, uh, and on your new comp- my computer's been uh, taking like two hours to export. Yeah, I don't know how you still use it. You always have like all these cords coming out of it. And like, I've never seen just your computer on its own. Yeah, that's the thing. I've I've run, I've had this computer since Orange County Blue Days. I've had it since Orange County Blue Days. And which is almost four years ago. And I've ran it into the ground. I use it every single day, hours and hours a day. So I'm really impressed that it's still even holding up right now. I never really see you using it very much. (laughs) <laughs> no just I just watch tv all day he lives on the computer um but yeah so hopefully you can get this episode out for tomorrow i will which is su- uh easter too oh yeah yeah easter sunday yeah so, it's, so i heard someone call this easter saturday i never called it that but i guess it is it's easter saturday afternoon yeah mm-hmm. um so anyway so uh a few topics for this podcast um first we had to run the beep test today and i say we because you ran the beep test yeah, with me got a 10 too <laughs> first try <laughs> how was how was the because you watched me do the have you ever seen the beep test before that i've done it like two days ago i had never seen it but i've like heard you talk about it a bunch because like different teams have you do it and stuff and people have always been asking you what your score was so i knew what it was but i never saw it yeah and like i mean i've done the beep test i think the first time i've done the beep test was in high school like my senior or junior year we did it and then we got all the scores and it was just more, it's just all competition between the team. Yeah. And then we did it in college a couple of times and then I've done college it. College was more the Cooper test or whatever. More the Cooper. Yeah. yeah. But then we did it, the beep test a few times, but it's always hard because like, even when I put out that video, when I just put it out, you, it's so like you, there's measuring things I've heard. I've even had coaches do 20 yards instead of 20 meters. And so your scores are inflated and then they come back the second time and they actually do the meters the well, second you time. You were doing 20 feet. I was doing so. 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what did you think though? It does it, it looks, you were saying it looks easy. It looks, it looks e- easier. It looks easier than it is. Yeah. I said it was harder than it looked. Yeah. Um, but like, obviously I wasn't taking it that seriously because with my migraines, like I can't push myself, which mm-hmm. like sucks. So once it was kind of getting hard, I just stopped and then I would join in again. So I didn't actually do it like full on, but, um, I would actually prefer that over like running straight because I think since it is a shorter distance, like each segment kind of like mentally, I don't know. I think it's easier like in shorter bits than just like running two miles straight. Yeah. I mean, that's even how like my mentality is for the John Terry test, which you have to do here soon. (laughs) I I used to do sprints like that on the treadmill inclined, probably not as long as you did it for and like as many reps, but, um, yeah, I can't really do that right now, but yeah, eventually. Yeah. But okay. Hey, Gucci, stop. Oh, La- yeah. Also, we have to just let you guys know, we don't have a child. <laughs> Someone got mad at us because they thought we were letting our child play with a lighter. It was our cat playing with the lighter. So we're responsible. 
obviously. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. You know, even if I had a kid, I'd let him play with the lighter. <laughs> I think it'd be okay. No. Um, but yeah, so anyway, the John Terry fitness test is, it's like really, really tough. And I was talking about all the fitness tests in my vlog where I kind of like briefly went over it. Um, but yeah, my <laughs> favorite one so far, honestly, is the John Terry one. This cat is going to kill me. I know. It's, every time. That's why I just want to walk hanging. in. She was hanging by the blinds. Okay. I'm sorry. Made me focus. I'm focusing. <laughs> what um, we're talking about tests. Be, be, yeah, beep test. So anyway, did the beep test. Are you going to try to like improve it at all or what's your goal you just want to do it for fun while i'm doing it or? well okay that's the thing is like i can't like i can't actually do it i will get a, like a migraine i'll have headaches afterwards so i don't know i think at the moment i i'm enjoying just like doing it alongside you and kind of like smaller segments like not the full thing straight i think that's good for me and i'll i'll try to improve that but i don't think i'm gonna go until like i die you know yeah. that's kind of what you do with it. If you guys don't know, Mimi has like migraines where whenever it's like a strenuous activity. Exercise induced migraines. Exercise induced migraines. But it, it really only came on, what, two years ago? It started last March when I was here. And mm -hmm. that's the first time that that's been a trigger because it, it's never been a trigger for me. I could work out twice a day and be fine three times a day. But now it's like I get them from exercising, which is really inconvenient. Yeah. But... And you've had every single treatment under the sun, pretty yep. much. And tests and MRIs and CAT scans and everything. And I've worked with neurologists. And at the moment, I just can't push myself that hard. So, yeah. So do you, this is actually like, I've, I've, we've talked about this a little bit, but do you think it's, because you've been getting like Botox now, all like put in, which is like a really helpful, yeah, supposedly a really helpful thing. I 34 injections in my head every... Do you think that's helped? Three months. Um... I think it's helped. Yeah. Because I was also getting them just normally like from nothing, like nothing mm -hmm. was really triggering them. And it's kind of gotten rid of that. I still, I've noticed that when I work out with you and I push myself, I'll get a headache, but it's not anywhere near like an actual migraine. So I think it is helping, but it's, it hasn't completely eliminated it. And I'm also just like scared. Like once you've been getting this for like a year, you're scared to push yourself. So it's yeah. almost like when I feel myself like really sweating and like out of breath, I almost like stop, even if like it would be okay because it could be okay now. Like I could be better, but I'm too scared to test it out. And it's just like any other injury. Like when you come back and yeah, then... you're always just like a little cautious of it, you know? Yeah. Do you think though? So this is actually something I was going to ask you too. Um, do you think that like, if you did like a very regimented every single day, tracked it, like this is what my workout for is on Monday, on Wednesday, on Friday and tracked it every single week and, and, boiled the frog the saying you know where you like slowly ramp it up do you think that would help like do you think you could like build up a tolerance for it yeah I think it would help but I just don't have the dedication that you do because I know that if this were you you would do that you'd be like okay one day I'm gonna do this yeah. two days later I'm gonna do this and like you've been telling me to do that but it's almost like like once something hurts because when you do that you still are gonna have some pain it's just you're you're going to get used to it. And you're going to be like push through it kind of thing. And yeah. then your body's going to get used to it. And it's almost like I'm just too scared. But I think that if I really, really wanted to, I could do that. I could, you know, start slow and like ramp it up mm -hmm. like scientifically, like, yeah, you know, the right yeah. way. And I think it would help. I just, I don't know. Yeah, because that's like so I've been like watching what you do and it like kind of kills me on the inside of like if that were me, I'd have it fully regimented. But again, yeah. you never know even if but that's, that's the work. thing. Like with my migraines, it could be like for no reason. Yeah. Like I could be doing exactly what you're saying and then randomly just get one when I'm not even like going too hard. And I read, I don't know if this is true, but I read that it was like exercise induced migraines typically actually happens between it's most common between women of like 25 and 30. Yeah. They so see the twenties and the thirties are the worst. So this is, could be something that you like grow out of and just goes away. Yeah. But at the same time, like what do I have to wait till I'm 40 to push myself? Yeah. Like that sucks. You just keep on seeing doctors. and <laughs> Yeah. Trying, yeah. <clears throat> but you know, yeah, so that's, there's bigger problems in the world. So I can't really complain. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of like fitness and everything, um, what was this? How long ago was it? Like three days ago, I got my nutrition certification, which oh, is yeah. very I cool. forgot about that. <laughs> cool. Kidding. Oh yeah, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, you you were. I think you finished it. Yeah, like a, a couple days ago. Yeah, but it was like it's, and I was so thankful because this is my biggest fear of doing that stuff. My biggest fear was to do that, and then everything I read in that course would be exact opposite of how I live my life or um, what I've been saying in my programs and YouTube channel. And so I like. 
I had that little bit of a fear. And even though I did so much research, I talked about this in my video and everything, but like, I was super worried about it. But it's funny because even it's, it's such a baseline, even for us about nutrition and everything. Cause that's been such a big part of our lives Yeah. because like you did the chapter quiz and you got like probably like 50% and never even seeing the chapter yeah. that I read. So yeah, then it's kind of funny, like how much you kind of already know just from, yeah, I think it just depends like what you expose yourself to, because like there's a lot of YouTube channels I watch of, um, you know, people that are certified and they talk about working out and nutrition and you kind of just soak it all in if you're interested in that kind of thing. Yeah. So like, I didn't even realize I did. And the thing that I really like about it, or actually I kind of don't, I wish it, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like to maintain the certification, you have to retest every single two years for but the rest of your I life. I think like it should almost be every year. Every, just because excessive. of how, I know, but science changes so quickly, especially with health and yeah. fitness. Like, I mean, I think two years is, letting you off easy. <laughs> okay. Good thing. You're Just not in charge. Month. Yeah, every month. No, but someone was, was asking you like, why do you have to do it every two years? Yeah. It's like, because it changes. Like mm -hmm. there's always new. It wasn't too long ago when they were saying that margarine is healthy. Like trans fat was all good. Like yeah, Chuck, are you listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause it was like, I can't believe it. Not, I can't believe it's not butter. You know, with the trans fat was like, mm -hmm. that's what you should use instead of butter. It's the healthy alternative. Or like, there's like all this stuff about even sugar being the culprit of obesity. And yes, it leads to it but it's the caloric and then it was fat and then now it's all about high fat diets yeah yeah look now it's carbs and bread mm -hmm. and everything so it was like yeah it's kind of funny so it's good that all that you have to retest every two so years so why did you get that why did i get it mm -hmm. um i honestly i think for a couple of reasons like one i really wanted to build credibility for myself like because it was just little things like um no, not that anybody ever called me out on anything that I was doing wrong or saying or anything, but I just felt like myself that if I was following somebody, I would have a little bit more peace of mind just knowing that they got a nutrition certification or they're a certified mm -hmm. nutrition coach or they were a certified personal trainer. It would just give me a little, even if I love their workouts, love what they were saying, did my own research, which I encourage everybody to do. But if I just saw they had those credentials as well, it would just give me a little bit more peace of mind. Yeah. So and I, you weren't like, I mean, you are doing a lot, but you're not training and stuff. So you have time at the moment. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? This is perfect. Stars align. Um, just try to do something. But see, that's one of those things that you have been thinking about for a long time, but you like haven't talked to anybody about it because you literally just came to me one day. You're like, I'm going to get my nutrition certification. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then you just like did it. But I knew that it was something that you Brewing. were thinking because you, you don't just do things without thinking. You think it, about it for like weeks, months, you know, and then you just like... Yeah, you was, don't tell you don't tell anybody that, but I bet it was in your plan like all along. Yeah, because I hate that where it's like that was been like my pet peeve like my whole life when people were like, I'm going to do this workout plan, I'm going to start yeah. this diet, I'm going to get this. It's like I hate hearing that. Like, oh, this is like when I when I would have like people always want to message me or talk to me about their like business plans, which I love. They're like seeking advice and stuff about how they just started a YouTube channel or whatever. Yeah, no one do that with him. He hates it. It's not that I hate it. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> don't I'm just kidding. It's not that I hate it. My problem is when I I don't see any action. Yeah. Like I, I, I love talking about ideas if I'm seeing you actually doing actionable and like work. But mm -hmm. if it's just like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. And it's just talk and talk and talk. And then nine months down the road, it's still in the works, in the plans. It is the worst. I, it pisses yeah. me off so yeah, much. Yeah. Like Shelly doesn't tell you that he's going to do something unless he's like starting it that minute. Yeah. Like that's what he did with me. Like he was getting his wallet out to get his credit card to like sign up for it. He's like, I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks <laughs> even, for consulting even me. <laughs> remember, that, remember starting this podcast? Like that was something I'd been thinking about and thinking about like, yeah. this, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. And then like one night I just was like, did a whole, I stayed up no, all you, night. You pulled like an all nighter yeah. and just ordered everything. <laughs> and then you told me the next day, you're like, yeah, so uh, we're going to do a podcast. And uh, I bought some mics and I bought this and I bought the sound things. I'm like, okay, so you've been really thinking about this like secretly. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, it just gets in my head. But yeah, that was like, so that was like the nutrition thing. So like, I thought it would add a lot of credentials. And also, I think it was good of like, even for myself and my body, like if I've been doing all this research about that high protein diets are the best for maintaining muscle mass and, you know, all mm -hmm. this stuff. And I, that's the research I had done. But then if I did, took this nutrition course and all the research and everything they were showing me was like, this could be dangerous for whatever reasons then I would have been like, oh, you know what? Maybe I can alter my own lifestyle to best be an athlete and, and be best for my pro career. Um, 
So that's why I also did it for the two parts, my, for my own credentials, for YouTube and the information I put out and for myself. But luckily, nothing really had to change. Do you want to talk about any of like the cool facts that you learned or do you want to save that for like one of your own videos? I think videos would be cool. I mean, there's so many little things that it's like, oh, wow, that's like. Yeah, because when you were reading through the chapters, you would like point certain things out and like it blew my mind. Like yeah. it's like that fat one. Yeah, there's this one thing that was like, uh, it's called brown fat and, and it's genetic. And there's just some people with brown fat and I have to look it up again to be hundred percent sure. But I think if you have these brown fat cells, just to, genetically, it's like a small portion of the world. Uh, you have a harder time keeping it on your body. You usually have less. Yeah. Like and it has a higher metabolism or something. Yeah. Like it you, burns. it's easier to get rid of. So it's like, you just can maintain lower fat levels easier. And I was like, huh? Like, and then they always say it's like all down to genetics. Um, but but it, that part is, but though. that part is, yeah. yeah you like, can't, if you don't have it, you can't get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you said you can't get brown fat, but you can still get down to low levels of yeah, fat. Yeah, but I'm saying with the brown, you can't get yeah, you, more brown nobody fat. Nobody can just have brown fat, like, and change that. probably all brown, like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that is something that I'm, I'm really good at not keeping on fat on my body, but it's the muscle mass, yeah. which is hard. I'm good me. at like looking good year round too. So <laughs> yeah. <Whatever. laughs> um, so that was the nutrition certification. I was really happy about that. Um, and I always, and it's big for me because even for Mimi, like you've been doing um, like literally right on the table right there is your interior design. Um, you're designing a restaurant for your I class. Am. So um, that's why I always say like in this quarantine, I hope that you're doing something productive and you don't have to, you, I think you should enjoy this time with your family. You should enjoy a little bit of time off. I know there's much stressful things to worry about and everybody should have some leisure time and downtime and however it's going to make them happy. But, you know, I do think this is a great time that you can take advantage of not only with your soccer training, your workouts with whatever, but get ahead or, or accomplish goals or, or like do something that you've been, been putting off because do. you didn't have time yeah like that nutrition course or or uh mimi's designing the restaurant and what do, what, do you want to talk about that the, my restaurant yeah talk about your <laughs> restaurant for a bit okay okay <laughs> um well it's for a school assignment and the class is commercial interior design so we've had assignments for like lodging so we did a hotel design um boutique design which is like a store and now we're doing a restaurant and the professor gives us like, you know, the brief. And, um, so we have the shell that we're working with the building shell and the requirements. So it has to seat like 50 people. There has to be indoor and outdoor seating. Um, there has to be a certain amount of square feet per person just for code. And that's just how much room each person person should have. Um, but then we have like free reign for everything else. So free reign. Does that make sense? Yeah. Free reign, free reign for everything else. Um, so we can design the concept, um, the whole floor plan, the colors, like furnishings, everything. So I chose to make mine Portland themed, <laughs> which Shelly doesn't understand because he's like, why would you want to go into a restaurant that's Portland themed? Because he's sick of Portland, but um, it's in San Diego. So I thought it'd be cool because it's like the complete opposite aesthetic of San Diego because we have nothing like old fashioned or vintage or that cozy vibe that the Pacific Northwest has. So I thought it'd be a fun concept for a restaurant in like a beachy city so yeah 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 so like that's yeah it's pretty cool it's looking pretty good yeah well the way i start like any project which i recommend like anybody do even if you're doing it like for your room or just like rearranging something is to always start with a pinterest board and like even like the biggest um interior design companies like that's what they do they start on pinterest they create a board and that's like where your concept comes from so you pin things that have like the mood you're going for or the vibe or colors or whatever and then from that you can start getting ideas so that's kind of what i do yeah i mean that's even like how i make a program like for the three by three like start with like a blank sheet i'm like okay the whole idea is like to make a tight space thing and then it's like colors i'm like okay I, almost like the same thing what you do with the colors yeah. and i'm like okay and then like shapes what are the shapes i want to like incorporate well, it's really similar to graphic design and like that's what you're really good at like that's why i think your programs look so good because you're really good at design and it is all graphic design yeah it's a lot it sucks. it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> i hate making programs yeah but how good does it feel though once you get like the concept down and you're like yeah, okay yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what each page is gonna be like yeah. this is like the overriding color and theme like it feels good to get that and then everything else kind of falls into place yeah. and then you kind of work from like big to small so you start with like the big overall plan mm -hmm. yeah that's good um but yeah that like in general like that's what like i like it's just 
you're doing something during this time. Cause like I even see on TikTok, I'm always on TikTok watching brainstorming, but there's like people that are like coming down. Brain, you can't turn TikTok into yes, I can. a work thing. Yes, I can. You just sit there for hours, like laughing at stuff. Okay. So, but it's the same thing when I watch YouTube videos, you, yeah. can, you can do both. Like I'm watching the TikToks, but just like on that one, like I see an idea. I'm like, oh, this is good. How can I incorporate this to make a TikTok for my yeah, business? Yeah, you guys should have or, seen his TikTok uh, making yesterday it took me like 12 he did tries. research then he practiced the face a couple <laughs> times recorded it to practice the face then he had to re-record like five times finally got it down and then he watched it like a hundred times <laughs> a lot goes into these tiktoks uh, for for four seconds yeah yeah no but like it is like like that's everything you have to like watch it and then you have to pick up on the trends and then you have like okay how can i make this trend work for soccer or for become a leader or whatever mm -hmm. same on youtube I find something, there's so many videos that I've created on YouTube because I've seen a video in a completely different genre. And I'm like, oh, I should put this yeah. into the soccer world. See, because I feel like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram is like your like research. And mine is just like Pinterest because you're constantly seeing yeah. other people's work and then like getting ideas. Um, so it's just different platforms, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we don't really have much like crazy stories to talk about um, because... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, we don't have many crazy stories to talk about because we've just been in this apartment still in quarantine trying to like social distance as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But so the, in other than that, the big news is that you gave me a haircut and we've been doing a lot of zoom classes. So for the haircut, uh, what do you, how do you think of you? What do you think of your work? <laughs> are you on the good side or the bad side? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, which year is it? I don't know. They both look good to me. So. Okay. Do you the, know what it is? Do you know what I realized though? Tell me. The reason why the fading was so hard is because I was doing it the opposite. Cause remember I asked you like when you put the guard up or down, like if that cuts like longer or shorter, I think like in my head, I was like asking you the question a certain way and you were answering it in a different way. So I did it backwards oh my god <laughs> do you know what i'm saying so like yeah, if you guys yeah. don't know like when you cut hair like you start like if it's a three there's like a longer three and a shorter three and so like you're supposed to start like longer and then go shorter and then you can like so you started shorter and then you yeah, try to fade that's longer. why the fading was so hard this does it look a little bit like a stair yeah. step yeah but like i think the length is really good i think i did really good on the top yeah but that's why it wasn't blending because it was the wrong <laughs> the wrong length and yeah. i realized it at the end i was like Oh my God. But next time it's going to be really good because I'm going to know now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But honestly, for even making that mistake, it's decent. It's pretty good. It's a lot better than just having. You got to do a little spin. Turn around. Well, what if they're just listening to this? Well, for the people watching, I think it looks good. No, it is good. And I even got the top wet and I was like really going in with the little scissors. It... Yeah, no, it's, it's good. Yeah, I'm getting it down. Yeah. But it's just funny there's one time so after the took up after i got the haircut um mimi's like oh let me take a picture of it like the back and i even said no nah, it's fine i don't even see it and he was like no no, let me take a picture of it for you so i was like okay and then she grabs her phone and takes a picture of it and shows me i'm like and i look at it on the phone and i'm like that doesn't look very good it just doesn't look good on camera but then, in person it looks really that's good what, that's what Mimi said oh it just doesn't look good on and camera your head's kind of shaped weird so you have you gotta, to give me a little you gotta bit work of around it but no, it's okay. And then even this, like, it's just maintained from the, from our friends that we've seen on like Instagram yeah. and stuff from their girlfriends having to cut their hair in quarantine. Like, I think you're pretty lucky. Yeah. This is a pretty good haircut. One yeah. toot my own horn. <laughs> and you're just improving day by day too. I am. We'll yeah, try to good. get next time. And then, so, um, for your classes as well, cause the whole plan was for you to go back to San Diego. Yes. Um, and so now you're doing zoom classes. I'm doing zoom classes. We have like a zoom class going on every day, pretty much. How, how is, have you found the Zoom classes? Um, I mean, I prefer it because I, I would take working from home over working somewhere else like any day. Like I know some students who prefer to go to class because it like makes them work and stuff. I just think it's just a waste of time having to drive there and drive back. So I prefer working from home, but I think um, I'm just kind of a little annoyed because people are like getting used to zoom. They're like eating with it un or with it, uh, unmuted, you know, so you can hear them eating or like yelling at their friends or something. So <laughs> it's a little frustrating when you want to just like focus and get something done and like someone's doing something else, which happens on yours every single time. Yeah. But no, yeah. I've, Cause we do, so we do zoom, zoom messages easy on the mic, Mimi. What? Every stop. Every time you do that. <laughs> What? Every time you move it, it's, it's making noises. So? 
So be so be gentle. It gives the podcast character. Yeah, it's, this podcast has a lot of character. Good. Um, but so we do Zoom classes now four times a week. Because they're so funny. Like I choose to sit like behind the camera so I can just listen to all the guys on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Talk about that one guy who like answered the phone. Oh yeah, Panin. <laughs> he was on the podcast. Like he was our first episode or second episode on the podcast, Panin. Oh, I didn't know that was Panin. That's funny. Yeah, he, Panin, we were talking and he was like, we we're doing like a Zoom tactical defensive principle session. And we were literally talking about the defensive principles and he was giving our advice. And basically what happens is they'll show like a slide or a scene and they go ask players, where do you think that we should have done this differently? Or where do you think the team that we're watching should have moved or should have structured the defense? And this is like defense? the head coach Yeah, asking and the head coach him. is asking him, Panin, what's your thoughts now? And so Panin's talking and all of a sudden his phone starts to go off. He goes, oh, sorry. And then he <laughs> answers it <laughs> on the Zoom call and goes, hello? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So anyway, I think we're <laughs> center man and we're like, Panin, that's a fine. You can't yeah. answer this on the Zoom class. It was a delivery man or something. It was a delivery man, but it was just so fun. And then like little things like that. Like a lot of guys will have like their kids on the, yeah, on the podcast. Yeah, I have sympathy for them though. Yeah. I mean, some of these guys have like four little babies running around and yeah. it's like, there's where's he going to zoom? Like there's nowhere to zoom in quiet. Like <laughs> Yeah, it was like daddy daycare at Sips Place. Yeah. He has two twins and, and two other girls as well. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's good. And it, you can still get like, we could still get decent sessions on there to really talk about the tactical and defensive principles, the offensive, it, watch yeah. film. It's just hard though, because you guys have only played one game. So are you done with film now? So no. So we, we watched, we probably analyzed that first game for probably four hours in total. Um, all the different areas, principles, goals, everything. Um, and then now what we're going to do is our coaches have other teams in different leagues, the MLS, the over in Europe, different leagues all over the world where our teams really like their style of play, defensive principles, all that stuff. So what we're going to do is basically analyze and dissect teams that we want to have a similar identity to and kind of like watch them or what they do well, what they do bad and learn from them now. So that's what's going to go. I really like it. Um, I really like doing that tactical stuff and like learning. And I feel like even, which is really cool is like my gut, cause they ask you before and you have to submit your answers beforehand. And then you kind of review, this is, you have like the chart up. This is how many people said this, this is how many people said this. And I always like, kind of like, I feel like I'm most of the time on the right path, which is, oh, be really yeah. bad if all my answers were the exact opposite of what the coach wanted or whatever. But no, it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. I was going to ask you because I've just heard you like doing these zoom meetings. And I feel like a lot of the time, like the coaches will ask, oh, like, do you think that this player was in the right spot? Or do you think that he should have passed you the ball differently or something? Do you find it like awkward having to call out people on your team? Like, are, do you think people are hesitant to, or do you think they're like really professional about it? And they're like, okay. Yeah, like, we're, we're pros. Like it's, it, you know, that if you're being called out for something like that, like you're just learning like, okay. Yeah. You like anytime, like for example, I've been called, everybody's been thrown under the bus. Like I've had full video sessions where 50% of the plays are my fault or like <laughs> Matt Sheldon again, Sheldon again, you know, here. Yeah. And so you just kind of like learn of like, yeah, I made mistakes that game. Like I'm going to learn from them, but as long as I don't do this every single week and like, I've had teammates be like, no, Sheldon, like he completely messed me up, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And called you out. He shouldn't be there, do this stuff. And you kind of like, if you disagree, then you go, well, this is what I thought. And this is what I was, I thought that you were going to do instead. And so this is why we're on different pages, mm -hmm. but like, or then you kind of come to a consensus. The coach goes, okay, I really like, you know, what your center back saying, I, Matt, I don't think you should be there. You know, you should alter that. Don't do that anymore. And it's kind of like, let's, let's fix the problem. Cause we so all you have don't the get common like butt hurt when someone like, no. is like, why did Shelly do this? No, no, no. I mean, there are definitely are players who don't take it as well, but I think for yeah. the 99% of pros that I've been with, you can literally be like, no, this player, he messed up there. And everyone's like, yeah, I, I should have forced him this way or whatever. Um, so it's super professional and like, I, I'm sure you probably even heard like me saying like, I think he should have done this. I should, and yeah. people are watching you. Cause it's like, you're used to it's even just doing weird it. weird when you say that though, because I feel like you're like the least confrontational person I've ever met. So when you do say something like that, I'm like, well, like, yeah, but Shelly like, just called someone out. It's honestly, I get like excited about it. <laughs> like, yeah, whoa. no, but like in real life, I would not, but like on yeah. the field or in the video sessions, I, I, it's weird. It's like, the, it's like a switch. I have no problem yeah. being like, no, you can't like, no, that's not how it should be done. Like in a restaurant, if they, if the waiter brings him the wrong food, he'll eat it. Like he, yeah. he would rather eat it than tell the person that it was wrong. But like with these sessions, like he's really straight up about it. It's funny. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a combination of like, look, I'm not like being mean to you. 
I'm trying to get us to win. I'm just and telling you what, why you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get us to win. This yeah. is what I think you should do in order for us to win. And if you disagree, let me know and I'll try to hear your case. But all, my, I don't care. Like, I don't care what we do. I just want to win. And mm-hmm. what, I want to do whatever is going to be the best so that we can win. And if you forcing them in the middle, if everybody agrees that's the best way to, that we're going to win, force them in the middle and I'll adjust. But let's figure it out, you know? Like, so that's how it is. But yeah, no, it's kind of funny. I'll like never be used to that form of Shelly. It's really <laughs> yeah it's, it's different it's, it's different really same weird. thing it's like even in social settings like if i'm on the field with people no problem doing whatever i need to do have fun talking meeting people but then in the like yeah, i'm not like anti-social i'm good at parties and good at meeting people yeah but like i'm definitely different in different cases mm-hmm. which is funny um but yeah so that's like pretty much been our life is classes on zoom haircuts the beep test individual training give me a haircut easy it's just cut straight across yeah i just need one just straight across i literally could do it luckily i got a haircut like the day before quarantine started so (laughs) i'm good yeah so that's that's been our life um but anyway um now i have some questions that i thought were interesting i don't think we've ever asked these before so we'll see what you think um what's something people misunderstand about you um my i think I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Like my intentions, because <laughs> sometimes like I'm really sarcastic and like I, I think like my sense of humor, some people take wrong if they don't know me right away. Yeah. So they'll think I'm like being mean or like cold, cold, but really it's just like my sense of humor is just awkward and like sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, the way who was it you, you that put it like you're not bubbly. Like when yeah, you meet somebody. I'm like the least bubbly person in the entire world. Like you're like very. If someone's like, "Hi, nice to meet you." I'll be like, "Yeah, you too." I even say like, "Mimi, smile." Yeah, I'm like why? Like, <laughs> smile, just a. Yeah, no, like when I when I meet new people, I have to like consciously like remind myself to like smile and like be warm because like I just am not like that naturally. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. So I think I could a, definitely that's something be taken that's very away. different about us too, because like it's like it's very it's a weird dynamic like you or have no um, social anxiety to meet people and be in big groups and like to talk and, and to be the center of attention at something like that. Like in like when you're meeting new people, like no. That's what's weird though. Like why am I so good at that? If I like come off so badly. <laughs> to well, I think it's because I honestly think it's because this is just my analysis, but like, and you I don't think, know me very well. So. I, <laughs> I just think it's because you're very confident with your like personality. Yeah. So it's like, this is me. I'm going to go here. Everybody. I'm just going to be who I am already. And they can either like me or not. And I don't care. Like, that's what you kind of go in. Yeah. And so it's like, so you have no problem meeting all these people or, or being the only person who's meeting a full new group of people and just being yourself because you're just confident with your personality, yeah. which is really good. Um, but then I think it's because you're so confident about it that people are kind of like, wow, she's like, you have to, you just, and you're not like a bubbly, like, oh my gosh, yeah. how nice to meet you. Like, <laughs> then you have to think about it and tell yourself, oh, smile, <laughs> you know, yeah. just stuff like that. <laughs> like, say something nice. <laughs> <laughs> say something nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I feel like for me is this the, it's almost like a little bit different where it's like, I might like, if I'm in a, if I'm the only new person, like meeting all of your friends or something, I'm like, Oh God, here we go. You well, know? Do you know what it is? That I just realized now that you're talking about it huh. is I don't tailor my, that's what it is. I don't tailor my personality to yeah, fit yeah, yeah. certain people. So that's why people either like me or they don't. But with you, you like read the situation. You're like, what version of Shelly should I bring out? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, mine yeah. never changes. Yeah. So you are kind of like a chameleon and then I'm just like, you either like me or you hate me. Yeah. So. But that's how in high school I was friends with everybody, everybody. Like I would go, I would even have like full on like hang out, do stuff after school with like completely different crowds, mm-hmm. everybody. And I was like yeah. most, most congenial, which means like, uh, just that's when like, I learned the word. Yeah. When you told me about it. I was most congenial <laughs> in high school. I got like most athletic and most congenial and most congenial was like, well, uh, I got best looking and <laughs> best at running the mile. Yeah. Wow. That's mm-hmm. pretty good ones. But congenial. I actually did win some. I won like, which ones did I win? I won most likely to paint the next Mona Lisa. <laughs> Haven't done that yet. We'll get to it. Um, most likely to be on a runway, but they, it wasn't cause like model. It was cause of my clothes. So like they, made that clear, they made that clear to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then something else. I think like a flirting one or something. I don't remember. Nice. Your flirt. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So no, I think that's it. Cause it's like, if I'm with somebody that's not going to appreciate like a, a, a raunchy joke, like I will not say that. 
that okay that explains a lot because I was friends with a lot of different groups too like I didn't have just like one core group I could kind of float around and I had friends in each one but I also had like enemies in each one (laughs) 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 because there's certain people that just don't get me you know what I mean and like it's fine like I'd almost rather have that than like have a a person like a fake version of me you know what I mean so that never really like bothered me that much but now it makes sense to me because I just wouldn't tailor myself to fit their needs yeah and I I feel like though like I'm not being like a fake version like it's just like it's just a it's like the same way it's like when you go and talk with your grandma you're just different you know not really because she is wrong she say this, a lot <laughs> yeah <But> like <laughs> i i say different jokes when i'm around my grandma yeah, than I mean, when jokes I'm around my change, friends. but like overall personality you change yeah the way you are with your with like your good friends from college is way different than you are i think with your teammates here and then with your friends in portland like yeah. even though you might not think so like it's a little it's different i feel like that with uh, is a lot of people are like that they'll like switch a little bit yeah but you like really do it <laughs> Yeah. You're like a secret little genius in there. You're like, okay, which Shelly 2.4 for this one. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> this picture like SpongeBob, like a bunch of Shelly's running around. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's a good answer for you is like to misunderstand like your... Uh, like my just... You, my, kind of like the you have a little bit of a resting bitch face yeah. a little bit. So they misunderstand that. They misunderstand my face. <laughs> that's my answer. Um, what's the most important thing you've learned in your life? And how did you change once you learned learned it? Wow. Yeah. So okay, little, I'm going to need like a minute. Throwing you a softball can here. Come, can we come back to this one? Hold on. I'm, you, you need to stall because I have to think about this. Well, I can try to think of like for me, I think there's like a few, I think in terms of like my. I know what it is. Okay. Go for it. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> uh, the question is, what's the most important thing you've learned in your life? The most important thing I learned in my life is to spend your life focusing on something that you really want to do and you taught me that whoa college well you kind of taught me like junior year but I didn't really understand it until like senior year yeah you just got mad at me a lot yeah but I think I honestly think that people spend their entire life trying to trying to understand that like everyone hears it and everyone like knows of that phrase but a lot of people don't actually do it you know what I mean Mm mm-hmm And especially with interior design, I think it's one of those things like playing soccer where it's, it's a lot of people's hobbies and it's a lot of people's passions, but they don't think that it's like a feasible, like attainable career. Like it's just something like that they've always loved or they've always wanted to do, but they didn't do it. And I like, it actually makes me sad. Like we watch, um, what was the show we were watching where all the interior designers were like, Oh, it was the, it was like a British interior design competition, like reality show. And all the people were um, like amateur designers and each person was doing a different profession. They're like, yeah, I'm a lawyer in London, but like, I hate it. And like, I've always wanted to do design. That's how every single person was. And I feel like they all haven't like learned it yet, you know, or they have and it's too late. And they're like, well, I already, I'm already doing this. So especially now with the internet, you can have a passion for like Gary Vee always says it, like you have a passion for peanut butter. And you can review peanut butter. And if you have a big social following about, you can build a following of 50,000 people giving peanut butter reviews, sell your own peanut butter and make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Like you can do that. Yeah. Well, like, like you were telling me, was that yesterday when we were walking around that neighborhood or was that the day before? I don't know. It doesn't matter. We, yeah. We were just on a walk and we were looking at grass cause it was like a really like bougie neighborhood and they had really good grass. And you told me about that guy on, on YouTube yeah. who's like a groundskeeper and he makes all these videos just about his lawn like and how he cuts it and fertilizes it and feeds it and like everything and he probably has like a good following yeah so he has like ninety thousand followers on 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 youtube he just cuts subscribers i always say followers on youtube he has ninety thousand subscribers on youtube and yeah but his whole thing is he makes his backyard like a putting green or like a a, a fairway of a golf course but he just plays on it with his kids and his dog fairway is way different than putting green okay yeah i think it's more fairway so it's probably like he but he tries to bring it down and like levels it bermuda isn't Bermuda you're like the grass expert it's so funny Bermuda talking grass. to a soccer player about grass Bermuda grass Bermuda is that's, a putting I love it. that's the best uh, I don't know if it's what they use on like golf courses where it's like chipping area I don't know what they use on golf courses but that Berm- was Bermuda I don't know I just know for soccer but yeah uh he, it's just interesting because I was like watching it because it's like okay one day I want to have like a backyard like that but yeah and I was like transfixed with this guy giving like and he has like a full that's probably his full-time job well he's a yeah. groundskeeper but he probably makes a great living from 
that. And I'm I sure d- he sells or does lawnmower reviews and gets affiliate marketing yeah. or does something like that. I'm like fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just think it's the coolest thing when someone is an expert at something like yeah. we like our favorite show right now is called the repair shop. Mm-hmm. It's on Netflix and it's another like British. I like British shows, but it's like this really like wholesome, like heartwarming show where they just have all these professionals um, or all these different experts at different trades repair people's like heirlooms and like family antiques and stuff. So there's like, you know, a metal worker, there's a leather person, there's a person who specializes in brass, like restoring, like there's, there's experts at everything. And it's so interesting to like watch those people. Yeah. I don't know. I love that. No, it's good, but we can't watch anymore. Oh yeah. We finished it. We finished it last night. But there's, I think there's a new season coming out. When? Cause I follow Will on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know when we're going to get it, but it's currently going live in England. Yeah. But no, that's a good, uh, good lesson. Is that a good answer? Yeah. I'm glad that I taught you that. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. <laughs> um, well, you kind of like hammered it into me. Yeah. I remember cause it was your year and you kept on doing business. I'm like, Mimi, stop. And you <laughs> wanted to go into like a business degree or get something. And you're like later down the road, I want to be an interior designer, but I just want to do this, make some money. And I was like, Mimi, what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. That's how, I told you it wasn't nice. You were like, here's I was, a good tip. <laughs> yeah, it was soccer critique, Matt yeah, Sheldon. You're like, okay, fine. Like, and you would just like hang up, like super pissed like, off. Oh, it just blew my mind. I'm like, yeah. why would you not want to try? Like, this is your time to but try. But what's crazy is that's how probably 99.9% of the world is. Like, yeah. they just do what's practical and what everybody else is doing. And Yeah, but it just, like, I remember we literally got into heated arguments because I was like, Mimi, why are you, you, you want it? You, you would always ask me, like, what do you like to do? I was like, design. And you're like, okay, then what are you going to do? I'm like, ah, f- financial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. And it looks, and, and it's, you would get so mad it's at me. It's funny because, like, it's funny because it seems so obvious now to look back yeah, on it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, like, you were set on, like, no, I'm going to do this for three to five years, make Make some money and then I'm going to go switch over to interior design. I'm like, what? it doesn't matter. Like why you're going to get set into your routine. You're going to get your apartment. You're going to get comfortable yeah. and then you never will be an interior designer. And you're like, yes, I will. Like, you know, and I'm like, then just, if that's what you want, why don't you just try now? And then you see, have that. Do you see that face? That's uh, the face that was yelling at me yeah, every day. It just made me so mad. It's just like yeah. that. That was the thing. And I kept on like, it was, fu- it was funny. I wish I had some of that like recorded or something because <laughs> that'd be really funny to go back on mm-hmm. and that, and I was right. So, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You would say Interesting. Hmm. I hate that face when he thinks he's right. He just goes, hmm. Um, what's the best compliment you've ever received? Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I haven't really received that many, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, that's a hard question. Probably not from you. Probably not. You don't give me very many compliments. No. <laughs> I like fish for them. I'm like, so do I look pretty today? You're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, God, can you think of yours? Um, yeah. Well, you get compliments like 400 times a day. That's not <laughs> fair. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, you don't get to answer that. Okay, what's your? <laughs> um, it honestly, it's just like that. You're like hardworking. Oh, that's so boring. I know it's boring. But I think that's the best compliment to get. Like, cause it's like, I don't know. It just, to me, if someone tells me, oh, you're very hardworking, like, even though it's a uh, cliche, mm-hmm. like, it really shows that, like, not only, like, that's, I mean, that's the whole, I don't know. I kind of view that as like the key to it, everything and just put in the work, hard work. So when someone tells me that I'm actually hardworking and going after it and they inspire them or they, that I inspire them to, to work hard, then, yeah, that's like the best compliment I can get. I probably the best compliment I could get would, or that I did get was probably after my, I did that birthday party for my grandma, the surprise one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then did like the book and everything like there, they, people, the whole time people were coming up to me and just saying like that they couldn't believe that like I would do that for, for somebody. And that like, like people were just like speechless that I like did something like that. And I think that, I mean, maybe they were like surprised, but like it felt good that people were like noticing that I was like that caring. I don't know. You know what's super interesting about that too? What? Like that's just like a little analysis right here again. Stop like, smiling <laughs> like this. It's freaking me out. No, um, honestly is that the compliment, like what you think is the best compliment shows what you value. I feel like most about 
yourself almost yeah so and it's kind of funny because i it's like when we look at the differences between you and me or whatever like you are like the most like selfless person like always helping other people more so than even yourself or i'm like mimi do something for yourself yeah it's like a problem sometimes yeah but it's funny that (laughs) your favorite compliment is something about that you know it's kind of funny yeah I mean, I've gotten like great compliments like, oh, you're hilarious. You're the funniest person <laughs> Who said <ever."> that? <laughs> Who said that? Oh, tons of people. Yeah. But I don't know. They don't mean as much to me, I guess. They no, don't. that's what I'm saying. Like the compliment that you like the most is like what you, I feel like you value about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Last question. And then we'll stop the podcast. It's a short one today. No, this one's the easiest one. Did you want to be an interior designer when you were like young, like a kid? Yes. So that whole life. Was like 100%. It? So since you were like my, four or five years my old, my entire life, I have loved nothing more than doing interior design. What about financial analysts? Oh, that was like a top interest <laughs> in my junior year of college. Um, no, but like I told you, I think I told you before, I didn't know that it was a career for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I'm just stupid, but like my family, we didn't have an interior designer. Like some people grow up with that and like knowing that. And I mean, I kind of knew it was like a thing, but just not really because my dad did construction and he was always working with designers but I didn't know exactly like I didn't know exactly what they did and like what their career consisted of so I I think I knew it existed but I didn't know that it was like an actual job that I could have until like senior year of call or senior year of high school I was like that would be really cool but you know everyone else is going into like law and all these medical degrees and I was like I can't do design like mm-hmm. you know I'm going to like a nice UC like I need to get a good degree in something so I didn't pursue it but I it was always my passion like yeah I rearranged my room probably like 400 times <laughs> if you like cut through the walls in my room it I'm not even kidding there's like an inch of paint like it's insane like how because I, I it was always something that I wanted to do, but like, it's hard to, to exercise that like part of your brain because like, it's not like soccer. We can just go out and play and then come back inside. It's like, yeah. you need to actually change a wall or like buy <laughs> furniture. So it was always really hard to do. And I think that's like what my parents hated the most. Cause I made them like buy a lot of things and like <laughs> change things, you know? And they're like, why can't you just chill? You know, and I'm like, well, I need to paint this yeah. wall. You know, it's, it's one of those things that's really hard to do if you don't have the means and the money and like the space, mm-hmm. but it was something that I always loved the idea of and doing for myself. It's funny. I think I changed the color of my room once. Yeah. Your family is different than mine. And I think it, the, the one reason it happened, cause I kind of dark blue. My mom was like, came into my room. And she was like, and kept on what we call it a dungeon. It's like, it's a dungeon in here. I'm like, what, I was like, like, was like you too. pick the color. I didn't pick this. <laughs> and then uh, after like 10 years or something, when I was in my house, like I was 13 or 14, my mom's like, we're painting your room. I was like, okay. She's like, what color do you want? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> so See, we are I don't, even know, what, I don't even know what color my room is now. Tan? This thing is tan. It's like a cream. Yeah. Yeah. So she picked the color, but the, she only did it once. I was like, oh yeah. She's like, do you like it? I'm like, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> See, our, yeah, our house changes like every day. Yeah. Like it's never done. But that's the thing that's like, I think we're going to like butt heads with a lot because you want to just get a house, decorate it and like be done with it. Yeah. And I'm like, no way, no way in hell that's <laughs> happening because it's something that's fun for me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I like changing things. Like I will never be satisfied at all. And I'm telling you that now, <laughs> like it's never going to be done like ever. So just giving you a heads up. <laughs> giving you an heads up. Yeah. Um, what about when you were like three or four? Did you still like, I want to be a interior designer? I don't remember what I was thinking at three or four, but I, I mean, I was always doing things creatively. Like I was always doing like fashion design or art or mm-hmm. interior design, but interior design was something that was always just constant. Like everything else would change, but every time my friends wanted to change something or their parents wanted to change something, they would always ask me. Like mm-hmm. I was like that person that they would go God, to. I can't believe that you were considering fi- going into San Francisco and being financial, whatever. I don't even know what, what? I don't even know what I was going for. I would love to see an alternate universe where you did that and how much you would not like what you were doing. I'm sure you would probably. I was bored during the interview. <laughs> like I did a couple interviews and I was sitting there and I was like, I hate my life. I hate my life. And, <laughs> and that's like, supposed to be the exciting part. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's not boring. That's a sign. If you're going into an interview and you hate it, mm-hmm. just get up and walk out. Yeah. I think when I was a kid, it was, it started off as paleontologist. Because I love I dinosaurs. I would have loved you to be a paleontologist. Too high energy. 
You have to be so, it's like you the people, really fast. no, the people that do that are literally like the people that are on the repair shop. I would not have the calm patience of low yeah, energy. You'd be so determined that you would search the whole world till you found a bone. Like and you would you not know, stop. You know what killed that dream for me is when I realized that like some paleontologists go their entire life without finding like a big find. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would be digging up Tyrannosaurus Rexes like every day. Yeah, you would die. But then it was always athlete. Then it was basketball player. Profe- and I want to play in the NBA. And then it See, was... See, the way that you were about sports is how I was with creative stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I probably would have been happy doing like anything creatively, but this was just like my favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. All right. Well, that's like questions I have. What time, what are we at time wise? We are at 51 minutes. Oh, perfect. Perfect length for a podcast. Perfect. All right. How did you enjoy this one? It was good. It's a good one. Good questions. Mm-hmm. I don't think you've ever answered those before. That's good. I don't think I have either. Well, Where'd cool. you get those? <laughs> None of your business. There's no way you thought of those. Why? Because. They're too introspective. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, this is the Against All Odds podcast. This is the fun version, the chitty chat version. And then the uh, next one will be about my uh, time in Germany. So hope you guys like the podcast. Once again, thank you to Chaos Soccer Gear for sponsoring this episode. C-H-A-O-S Soccer Gear. Dot com. Yep. Chaossoccergear.com. Link in the description if you're watching on YouTube. So see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Someone said they liked when I spell stuff. Really? Should I spell more things? Yeah. How about each podcast you give me a word? A spell check word? Like yeah. to try it? Okay. Give me one. What, right now? Yeah. Uh, let's do thesaurus. T-H-E-S-A-U-R- let me double check. <laughs> Is it U.S. or O.U.S.? The Soros. The Soros. I'm going to say U.S. U.S.? Correct. Wow. Yeah. I actually know how to spell that one because I always type that in on Google to like go to the Soros. Nice. Well, you passed today. Thank you. What was that word that was really hard yesterday? Maryland. Gorgeous. Maryland. I was trying to type in like oh. Marilyn Monroe. Oh, Marilyn. That one got me. <laughs> that one's a tricky one. All right. Well, tune in next week for Mimi's word of the day. Mm-hmm. Peace. Peace. Peace.